friends, please be seated. Good morning. Good morning, Tom. First, I'd like to welcome everyone, the coaches, players, friends, and family to the celebration of life of Roland Vincent Massimino. Many of you know our father as mostly a great basketball coach, but he was also a great husband, father, grandfather, friend, and mentor, uh, which meant so much more to him than just being a great basketball coach. Our dad was the son of two Italian immigrants. His dad was a shoemaker and his mom a homemaker. They taught him all about family, loyalty, and sticking together. His brother Carmen was not just a brother, but also his best friend. All of the fam these family values were only enhanced throughout his life with the marriage to Mary Jane Reed, our mom. My mom and dad were together for 59 years. Through all of these years of our dad being in the limelight, there is one person that made all of this possible, my mom. She is not only our mom, but the second mom to all the players here today. There is a Perry Como song called Win Beneath My Wings that describes how special our mom's support and love meant to him. Mom, you are always the one that held everything together to make our lives and his life special. If I had to choose only one word to describe my dad, it would be family. Not only his own, but his team as well. Family was everything to him. As kids, all he ever asked us to do was try our best and let the chips fall where they may. But you always wanted to do your best because you know that's what he would have done and as everyone has heard him say, the harder you work, the luckier you get. There was a time when one of us was struggling in school, but trying our best. So we came up with a new grading system. A's were awful, B's were bad, C's were could do better, D's were darn good, and F's were fantastic. <laughs> you players did not have that luxury. <laughs> I know over the past few days, our entire family has heard my dad talking to us, still guiding to be the best we can be. He always made our family feel special, even when he was a high school coach making $3,600 a year. We had love, each other, and pasta. What else could any family want? When my dad went into hospice, hospice we called some of his players and coaches to get the word out. There was one continuing theme. That guy changed my life. He always wanted the best for everyone. And the word failure was never an option. His favorite days of the year were graduation day and Christmas, and both involved his players. As he tried to call each and every one of his families, of their families, and it meant he was able to be with his family and give to everyone all around him. How can a 5'8", and I'm being generous here, guy be a role model and the toughest guy you know in the room? It's all about family. The stories from his players, coaches, and friends are endless, some of which will stay in our own individual hearts forever. He made people feel special, and all of us have our own Roly Massimino story. Near the end of his life, he kept fighting, just like all of us knew he would. He held on until most of his family and current players came to say goodbye. He lived through the success of his players and family, and they were the ones that had to let him go. After my dad passed, he went up to heaven and met St. Peter. He asked my dad if he had any questions before he came in. My dad only had one. Do you guys serve linguine, linguine with clam sauce with lots of cheese? <laughs> Before concluding, I have to give a special thank you 
to my two sisters, Leanne and Michelle. They interrupted their lives to make these past few years special for my parents. Words can't express how grateful we are for everything they have done. As a lot of us know, no one lived life to its fullest more than Rolly Massimino. Dad, you'll always be a Hall of Famer in the game of life. Might as well take it out now. <laughs> 40 years, that's how long we were friends. Never knocked on our door coming over to our home. Always just walked through, what's going on? <laughs> but there was a period of time when he was walking through the door, he noticed on my wall, I was, I was involved with Wilson Sporting Goods. And every year or two, they'd send me a set of golf clubs. And there was also, a, somebody was sending me a case of beer on a monthly basis, and it was stacked up pretty high. By the way, Rafa was free, the, the beer. <laughs> and Rolly was like, hey, what are you gonna do with all this stuff? And before I knew it, I had one case. <laughs> hey, hey, Father so-and-so needs a pair of left-handed golf clubs. Oh, okay. He left me one set of golf clubs. They were all gone. And he was truly one of my dearest friends. And Bishop DeSimone, thank you so much for being here for the family and everyone and Father Layton. But I have one story though. Right now up there, there's a guy named Chuck Daly and Roly Massimino standing together. And Chuck is saying to Roly, hey, Nice affair. Cathedral, Villanova, got the bishop, got all the priests, players, etc. He said, you remember mine? Yeah. He said, I had a cardinal. <laughs> 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 and Rowley's comment is probably, hey, the bishop could have been a cardinal, but he decided to stay where he is. That's the only reason he's not a bishop. <laughs> But I'm going to share a few stories. Um, I joined a country club, and it was didn't know anybody. Within a week or two, there was a member of guest. So who would I invite? Roly Massimino, my dear friend. Play a practice round, finish, was sitting in the 19th hole. And all of a sudden, he strikes up a conversation with these two guys over here who I've never seen or known in my life. You Notre Dameers, what do you know? We'll bet you $5,000 we can beat you in this tournament. What? I don't even know if these guys can play scratch handicap, anything, but because they're from Notre Dame, we got to bet them five grand. <laughs> so walking out, I say, grab one of the guys who now is a dear friend. I said, would you mind if we cut the bet in half? <laughs> Fast forward, we win the tournament. Roly finds out I cut the, 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 the bet. <laughs> What are you doing? They're from Notre Dame. He's sticking me in the chest. So we dealt with it and we moved on. But 1985 was a phenomenal year for the Massiminos, for Villanova, for the whole community in the basketball world. But there's a couple of stories you might not be aware of. Number one, I get a phone call at seven o'clock in the morning, just after the championship. Put the coffee on, I'm coming over. Okay, go down to my basement. I'm going to Arkansas. What? I'm going to Arkansas. I said, Roll, have you ever been to Arkansas? No. They're gonna give me a farm. What are you gonna do with a cow and a horse, Roll? What do you know about farming? I, what, it, it's, but they're giving me a great deal. What do you know about the program? Nothing. Now, what conference are they in? I, 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 they're in one of those southern conferences. I said, hold it up, babes. Love you. You, know, you need to go see your godfather. 
Art Kenya, who at that time was chairman of Villanova. He'll help you get through that. Thank God Art was there, got it resolved. Rowley was happy. Second, do you remember there was a big roast and dinner on City Line Avenue at a hotel for Rowley? Um, Jimmy V was there, etc. Well, at two o'clock in the morning in my kitchen, Jimmy V is complaining to Sandra, my wife, these bagels are too small. Why don't you get the big bagels, you know? So I'll get them next time, Jimmy. And we're having a few drinks, etc. And all of a sudden, Rolly says to me, I'm not going. I said, what are you talking about? Well, I got a press conference tomorrow with the New Jersey Nets. I have a contract to, play, to coach the New Jersey Nets. I said, Rolly, you, you can't do this. I mean, you're supposed to be up there at one o'clock press conference for the Nets. You gotta call him and tell him I'm not coming. <laughs> Here I am at 2.30 in the morning, calling a guy who I happen to have gone to kindergarten with, Louis Chaffel, president of the New Jersey Nets, telling him, Rolly Massimino isn't coming. <laughs> Can you imagine? You gotta be kidding me. He's not showing up. I said, uh, what can I say? He's not going to be there. So th that were a couple of wonderful experiences with my boy. But the thing, his passion and his love for life, and one of the things that I, will always, I was always impressed with was that as a coach, he was never satisfied. He was always trying to learn, always trying to improve as a coach. Well, what do you think if we do this? What is the defense going to do to this? Da, 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 da. And he would just talk constantly. A week before he goes in the hospital for the last time, he's getting his team ready for the season. I mean, he just lived life to the fullest. And I'll give you an example. One day, I go down to McGee Rehabilitation Hospital, Mary Jane's there in Rowley. Rowley had just had a brain tumor removed. He's lying in the bed, he's got all these stitches in his head. And the first thing, I don't even get a chance to say hello to him. He says to me, hey, could you get me a tape of that Stephen Curry ball handling drill? I said, what? You, you got liver cancer, you got lung cancer, you just had a a tumor removed from your head, and this is your concern to get. Here comes Jay Wright walking in two minutes later. Tell Jay what you just said. And Jay looks at me and goes, what can you do? <laughs> what can you do? But the community he developed here, and that Jay Wright, who might not have ever been in Villanova if it wasn't for Rolly Massimino, he was here. And could, could I ask everybody for a moment to just stand? Please stand. You know, our boy loved to have a shooter. I was just, come on, let's go get a shooter. Let's kind of toast our boy and just tell him, thank you so much for allowing us to be part of your life. Thank you, buddy. stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the power of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And My friends, in the waters of baptism, Roland died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
And let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Roland, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand the truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with the elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God. shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into I should wander the valley of death. I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God. You have 
have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? He he who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, rather was raised, who is also at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks to be to God. Friends, the Lord be with you. And his spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. 
have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may also be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. What a life. Good life. Very good. Mary Jane and Tom and Leanne, Michelle, Andrew, RC, your extended family, children, grandchildren, fellow coaches, players, extended faith community. On behalf of my brother Augustinians, and all the many lives that were touched. We come here with tears in our eyes, but with great joy to say a big thank you to God for the gift of Roly Massimino. It's been said, you know, there is a certain gift of peace real peace and consolation in the midst of great loss upon the reflection of a life well lived. In the midst of the separation and the angst that we all feel, real peace in knowing that a servant of God has completed his job. Job well done. The word Villanova translates, it means new home. And we're so grateful that when Roly and Mary Jane, you brought your family to Villanova, you made it your home and you never left. Arkansas and all the other places it could have been. <laughs> Hearts with Villanova and Kaiser and all the other places that he gave his heart to. And so we're really happy to come together back here to celebrate. All of us would be so fortunate, wouldn't we, at the end of our life, if, if somebody said, one person said about us that he impacted my life or she mentored me. She helped me when I was down. And time after time after time, person after person after person, player after player after player, assistant coach, coach, friend, son, daughter, who can say, that's exactly what he did for all of us. Changed lives. Changed hearts. And so we come here with, with sadness, but great joy. You, you said it, Tom. I mean, everybody wants to equate, equate Roly Massimino with the word basketball. Why? How could you not? But the word that trumps basketball is family. It was his metaphor. It was the way he structured his life. And everybody was family. And he could be hard on family. He demanded much because he gave much. And so, what's really the best thing that families do. Come together around the table and share a meal. Pull up a chair, everybody's welcome, everybody's got a spot, pasta on the table, pull a couple corks, and tell stories. 
If you're going to Syracuse, you stop at Grimaldi's and you bring everybody together because it's not just about the game, it's about being together. And you leave the meal feeling better and stronger than when you first got there because you're part of something bigger than yourself. That's exactly what we do here. This place is not unfamiliar to the Massimino family. We come back, we pack it in, and we come around the table. And we share a meal. Where we're all strengthened. And we tell good stories. True stories. Like the ones we just heard in the gospel about a God who loves us so much that he sent his son into the world to show us how to live and show us how to die. You can say a lot of things about Jesus. He would have made a great coach. Jesus was a wonderful coach. He was always out there recruiting, recruiting and teaching and preparing and motivating. If you like little rhymes, you could say he cared, he was prepared, and he wasn't scared. He cared so passionately about people. He was preparing us for his going back to the Father. Because those disciples had spent time with Jesus just the way we spent time with our loved ones. They had gone to meals. They had, they had celebrated victories. They had celebrated losses. They had been together in so many ways. And so the prospect of Jesus going back to the Father scared them. And they were upset, and they were, they were wondering, well, what's life going to be like? And Jesus said to them what he says to us, right now, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith. Have faith also in me. And where I'm going, you too also go. And you know the way. And Thomas, Thomas is like that kid on the end of the bench, who, I don't think I know the way. And Jesus doesn't condemn him. He doesn't throw him off the team. He says with confidence and humility, I am the way and the truth and the life. And whoever believes in me and follows me will have everlasting life. Now go live your life. We don't have to live life long enough to know that Jesus' way is the way of the cross. Everything in our life doesn't go exactly the way we hope and dream and plan it, the way we design the play. And one thing we know about Jesus is he put his heart into everything that he did. He lived passionately and he cared about everyone. St. Augustine challenges all of us in life to engage our hearts. Rolly's way was engaged with the heart. Son of a shoemaker, he had soul. He put his heart and soul into a practice, into a meal, into a game of checkers, into a conversation. He put his heart and his soul into it. He engaged, his, he engaged you. Too many of us go through life lukewarm, where we self-select, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my all in this case, and maybe over here, and maybe over here. This is a big game, but this one's not. Rowley made his way, Jesus' way, and engaged his passion and his zest for life and his heart into every single thing that he did. And his relationships and his coaching, whether you were a, a, a five-star or a manager or a walk-on. To push and demand with that same zest and heart. And that's costly. Because when we give up our hearts, when we care that much, we often can come off kind of looking a little disheveled. I had more than a few of these guys ask if Stretch could maybe just untuck his shirt and mess his hair up a little. <laughs> because when we give our hearts and we live with passion, we're not afraid to look bad. We're not afraid to maybe ruffle a couple feathers because we believe and we want others to believe too. He cared. He cared fiercely. When Jake Nevin couldn't make a trip, you know who was taping ankles? Coach Mass. Which might explain why these guys are walking a little funny right now. <laughs> 
before there were before there were FARs and the NCA tracking graduation rates. He collaborated with Helen Lafferty and, and Dan Regan to make sure that, that we were conscious about life after basketball, that, that scholarship and study was important because he cared. He didn't recruit players. He worked with people. And when you care that much, it comes across. He could have a conversation with Father Stack after a game and he could tell him maybe what he could have done better to win that game. But then he would share in his ear that there was a student in Bryn Mawr who was suffering from cancer. And you know where Coach Mass was the next morning? In a hospital room. Because he cared. To care with that kind of boldness and concern and fierce loyalty. Players father passes away in the middle of the night and Mary Jane and Roly are in the living room of that family the next afternoon because he cared. He would say, you know, gosh, you guys would challenge him. You're still 81. You're still coaching. Well, when I lose my enthusiasm for kids, then I'll stop. And he never stopped. And we welcome the Kaiser community and the friends of all those who, whether you were going to the NCAA tournament or you were in a CYO gym, he was going to push you hard and never stop caring, never stop giving of his heart. Jesus says, I am the truth. And in a world with internet and social media, we got a lot of truth coming at us, what it means to be successful, what it means to, to have a, a purpose-filled life. Jesus was real clear and real simple. Love God with your whole heart, your whole mind, and your whole soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now go live in that truth. Roe lived in that truth. And he would tell you the truth, often without much sugar on it. Every time I would see Coach Mass, he would say the same thing. Well, I'm glad you all are taking care of Jay because the Augustinians used to pay me with rosary beans. <laughs> that was the truth. To tell you the truth. And if the student section was acting up, Maybe being unsportsmanlike, he would walk off the sideline, because I was a student here then, he'd walk in front of the student section and say, we support our team, but we respect our opponent. And that was the truth. A boldness, a willingness to step out there and say maybe what others are reluctant to say in that truth. Eddie Pinkney texted me one line. He said, he was true to his word. And Mary Jane, you and, and Roly lived in that truth for 60 years of marriage, 59 plus. <laughs> in a day and age where we take vows and, and pledge ourselves to things until it's not fun anymore or it's inconvenient, you lived in that truth through sickness and health, wins and losses, and whatever else came your way, living in that truth. We had a wonderful time nine years ago, renewing your vows down the shore, celebrating that truth. And all your grandchildren, you got a t-shirt for every grandchild, and all it had on it was a number. One, two, three, four, 17. Each grandchild had a number. That was his team. Live in that truth. And we're inspired by that truth to honor the commitments and pledges that we have to make in our life with that same strength that comes from family and faith and friends and God and one another. Jesus says, I am the life. Very paradoxical statement. 
because life in the world can be so much about acquiring and saving and amassing and getting. And Jesus showed us in life, it is not what we get, it is what we give. And Jesus spent his whole life giving it away, giving his time, giving his forgiveness, giving his humor, giving his healing, giving his words. And he gave and gave and gave, and he so emptied himself that the Holy Spirit enters in and does what the Holy Spirit does. Well, he was a giver. And he gave. You saw him at the summer jam and came back for a beautiful reunion on campus. And he still had the twinkle in his eye. He still had that spirit, but you knew, you knew he was very sick. And he was on campus and he, and he, and he, he kind of showed us that, that dying is just like living. He was grateful for his family. He said how lucky he was to have all the friends that he had. He was still looking forward, moving forward, so, so happy that another grandson was going to be on the staff. Still looking forward. I got two guys I'm looking at from Serbia. Still living in the face of, of weakness, in the face of trial and struggle, relying on the strength of others, giving giving all, and he was prepared, and he wasn't scared, and we had a wonderful opportunity to pray and, ble and bless Roly about two, day two days before he passed, received the Eucharist, said prayers together, surrounded by faith, family, and friends. He used to say, what, if you gave him more than one day to prepare, he was undefeated. He was prepared. We had a beautiful service, and Harold Presley leaned over and said to me, when he recruited me, he said he'd be with me until the day he died. And he was. And you were with him. And that's true strength. And that overcomes all. And as I said, I was a, a sophomore student on April Fool's Day, 1985, running around like an idiot, right in the quad, <laughs> right up in the trees. And our takeaway was so much more than a game. A whole generation affected and inspired to believe in the impossible. To be an April Fool. He was an April Fool. Because that's what leaders do. It's easy to believe after the fact, after it happens. But to believe what can be done when, when maybe nobody else sees it. And you see it in others, and you see it in players, and you see it in yourself. St. Augustine says, see what you believe, and then become what you see. That's what leaders do. In April Fool, you can't do that. You can't, you can't do that at a small Catholic school. That player's only a two-star guy. You can't get that out of him. To be April Fools. We leave here inspired to go forth as April Fools. To look at those things that seem impossible in our own life and to believe with faith, family, and friends we can accomplish them with God. To not be afraid to put your whole heart into something, even if it's not reciprocated. Not be afraid to say to someone at the end of a conversation, I love you. We thank God for the gift of Roly Massimino and his family. And we come here to celebrate his greatest victory. With Jesus Christ, his victory over death.
be inspired by his life. When you're challenged, hear that barking Italian voice saying, don't give up. Keep pushing forward. As one family. He's up there with Jake, smoking a cigar, thanking God for the gift of his life and his family as we do now. And God says right back to him, well done, my good and faithful servant. stand as we offer our petitions before God. For all of our family and friends that were there to meet Poppy at the gates of heaven, May they rest in peace in the kingdom of God. We pray. For all doctors, nurses, and support staff, may you continue to heal your patients with expertise and compassion. We pray. For the hospice community, may the Lord give you strength to con continue to guide families as their loved ones embark on the journey to eternal rest. We pray. For Poppy's family and friends, may the Lord give us strength to carry on during this difficult time and continue his legacy of faith and family values. We pray. For all those near and far battling cancer, for courage and strength to face every challenge with grace and peace, we pray. For young athletes everywhere, may you work hard and always do your best and fulfill your dreams of sportsmanship and enthusiasm, we pray. For the victims of recent hurricanes, may you take solace in the Lord's blessings while you endure the process of rebuilding your homes and communities, we pray. For all the men and women in the military and law enforcement all over the world, may you stay safe while you serve and protect this wonderful nation, we pray. For our Bobby. Sorry. May you find your all-star team in heaven and watch over us and guide us as we follow your example of family, family and loyalty as we navigate this world in your light. We pray. Lord, you are prayer. Loving God, our shelter and our strength, you always listen to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer this day and bring us all at last to your heavenly kingdom as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be seated for our offertory. Grazie. 
grazia plena, Maria, grazia plena, Ave, Ave Dominus, Dominus Tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus, et benedictus fructus ventris, ventris tui, Jesu. Ave Let us stand and pray together, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Roland, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. My friends, the Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise. O Lord, Father of infinite goodness, for by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and you have filled her with the life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yet you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for all eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice we acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the working and the power of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his friends, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles, St. Augustine, St. Thomas of Villanova, St. Monica, St. Rita, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Charles, our Bishop, all the bishops, clergy, sisters and brothers around the world. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Roland, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Trusting in the God who gives us the strength to carry and rise from our crosses, we pray the words that Jesus taught us.
us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Friends, see what you believe and become what you see. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Continue our prayer. God and Father, we are grateful for your servant and your gift in rolling. Fill us with your spirit. Grace us with consolation as we continue to move forward in our lives. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. And please be seated. I'm sitting next to Billy Cunningham, and he just leaned over and said to me, Man, I would have loved to have played for Rowley. Thank you, Father Rob and all the Augustinians for such a beautiful mass for coach. Father Peter, Father Rob, and again, all the Augustinian fathers, thank you for bringing Coach Massimino home. Villanova will always be home to coach and the Massimino family. On behalf of all the former players, coaches, managers, staff, and the entire Nova Nation, to Mrs. Mass and all the Massiminos, thank you for the sharing of Coach Massimino with the entire Nova Nation. Mrs. Mass, I know coach is in heaven, therefore you automatically qualify for sainthood. <laughs> Everyone in the Villanova family has supported your sainthood for years. I speak for all coaches and players when I say thank you for cooking for us, caring for us, and standing up for us, especially when coach wanted to kill us. From the Villanova family, a heartfelt thank you to everyone from other schools who traveled to celebrate Coach Massa's life today. I hope you know Coach, the Massiminos, 
and the entire Villanova family appreciate your presence. For everyone watching in the Conley Center and live streaming, you know Coach Mass is looking down on us and feels your love. When Coach Ryan of Villanova basketball camp, he would sell out camp at 500 people. The camp staff would be prepared for 500. Then he could not say no to anyone who asked to be squeezed in, and we would end up with 850 campers. <laughs> he would always swear there was only 500. We would make it work because we loved him. We would accommodate 850 campers and then agree with him that there was only 500 campers. <laughs> We're kind of doing the same thing today because we love him. So thank you for working with us and understanding and for making this work. God has a plan for all of us. God's plan for Coach was amazing. As Tommy said, he changed lives and empowered institutions across the country throughout the world. Boston, Long Island, New Jersey, Las Vegas, Cleveland, Florida, Philadelphia, Puerto Rico, and Italy. He touched them all. What is ironic about God's plan is that in Coach's last few years, he became a sweet, lovable, charming man that you always wanted to hug. The current generation of Villanova students, players, coaches, campers, and alumni think of him as a sweet, cuddly, happy-go-lucky little guy. <laughs> we loved every moment of this, and we never want those Villanovans to lose that vision of coach. But to those of us who worked for him or played for him, wow. <laughs> can, go can God do wonders or what? <laughs> to us, Coach Mass was simply the man. A, a, man, a man's man, bigger than life. Every one of us who is blessed to be a part of his family feel a hole in our souls that can only be matched by the loss of a parent. That's what he was to all of us, always the mentor, our daddy mass. To all of us, he is simply the greatest coach in any team sport in our lifetime. Coach Mass took responsibility for all of us. Coaches, players, managers, trainers, and staff. He taught us basketball, strategy, recruiting, scouting, and leadership. His greatest gift, however, was teaching us all about life. He taught us to be wary of people we didn't trust. As his mother told him, he told us many times, if you give them the finger, they're gonna take the whole arm. He taught us when times get tough in life and you are in a stressful situation, don't let your ghoulie pucker. <laughs> he taught us always to have our shoes shined, wear a pocket square, keep it straight. If someone has a nice pocket square that you like, steal it. <laughs> he taught us to stay away from briozoids. I don't know if we fully comprehended that one. But we know he wanted to protect us from women that he would think could distract us from reaching our potential. So we all just made sure not to marry a Briozoid, and we all made sure to teach our daughters not to grow up to be Briozoids. He taught us Italians should be extremely proud to be Italian. If you're a Metagon, you should wish to be Italian. <laughs> if you're a Metagon and you work for an Italian, don't ever tell anybody you're not Italian. <laughs> he taught us to eat well, pasta late at night, always al dente, drink good wine. Whenever the night is over and your stomach is full and you're tired and boomby, pull out the Zambuca. Coach taught us most of all to be loyal, work hard and be loyal, be on time and be loyal, always do the right thing and be loyal. I don't want to forget to stress that Coach taught us to be loyal. He was only an assistant coach twice in his career. He worked under Bill Martin at Cranford High and Chuck Daly at Penn. He loved and revered those two men. That's all he ever asked of us. St. Augustine said, the Lord, Lord, you've made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until we rest in you. 
Coach was always restless. He never slept, therefore we didn't sleep. He didn't relax for a minute, always fighting, competing, coaching, mentoring, caring, loving. He now deserves his rest. He is resting in the Lord. Every one of us who worked or played for him have restless hearts. It's because Coach's spirit will always live in all of us. Let's hope we can all continue with the energy, passion, love, loyalty for friends and family that Coach taught us. Coach Mass is forever our coach. All of us who ever played for him or coached for him will always, sim will always simply just want to make Coach proud. Take rolling to his place of rest. 